Hello, I'm Matt Guff from TheHouse.com, and I'm here with a couple guys from Ride Summers. We have Jim Limbert. Jim, how you doing? Good. Thanks for being here. And we have Michael Chilton. Um, Michael is a uh, board engineer. Uh, Jim is the global sales manager? Brand manager. Brand, brand director. Brand director. Manager, director, sales manager. Director, ah, gosh, thank you guys for being here. Uh, they're here walking us through a couple of things. There's a super clinic uh, today in Minnesota for all the regional shops, and they decided to spend a little time with us and walk us through a couple of different categories within the ride line. Uh, right now, we're kind of like walking through the all mountain category. And that, that word and that phrase kind of gets construed depending on who you are and where you live and how much or where you ride. Um, to ride snowboards, what, do, what does all mountain mean? I mean, all mountain kind of, it's hard to say because all mountain is every snowboard. You can ride every snowboard as long as it's rideable on every mountain. So it's a little bit hard to say that. We mostly just use all mountain as kind of a moniker for like just an all around snowboard, not something that's specific, not something that is specific to a certain type of terrain, something you can ride anywhere. Yep. across the entire mountain. Yeah, and each of them are different. So like all of our all mountain category, as we categorize them, aren't, it's not like they all have the same tech features. They're sure. all a little bit different. We got a twin that we call all mountain. We've got a couple different directional profiles. So it's more, um, I guess it's more of a, a board that's a versatility thing, right? Mm -hmm. So like we want it to be, if, if, we, if we think that it's versatile enough to be park, pipe, pal, then that's kind of where it lives, is all mm -hmm. mountain. And then the more park specific board we'll call park, and then if we got like a, um, a pal specific shape or something, we'll kind of slide it in there. So it is a, it's a continually evolving category. Yeah. Right. It makes us crazy. It's always so unique, especially on our YouTube channel, when people ask, can I ride this board in powder? Can I ride in the park? It's like, the answer is always yes, of course you can. Yeah. You know, like back when, like when Ride first started, what was it, 1992, right? Um, who was it, uh, who started, it was Mark Pogue? Tim Pogue. Tim, Tim Pogue. Pogue was one of the original guys there. Yeah. Um, there was a couple other guys whose names I can't remember. Yep. I just, I've met Tim. Yep. Um, he's at Mizu now, he started Mizu. Yep, um, Bottles. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so. They're family, aren't they, f they're from here. I think he's yeah. Minnesota. His wife, Stephanie, is from here. Yeah. And, uh. I used to I used to ride with Rainy, their, yeah, their daughter. daughter. Yeah. She rips. Yeah. She rips. I think most of the guys that started were all from A that lot place. of people were. Yeah, the yeah. original yeah. Uh, Scott Mavis was from here. Sure. Um, he was there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Man, who were the other two? Drapers from out here. Yeah. Drapers from yeah. here. Not is it Nigel? Maybe not. Draper. Mm -hmm. One of our head engineers. Yeah. At, and there was a lot of riders that uh, like in the early 90s that came from here like Nate Cole, Jake Blattner, Winfield wasn't from here. No. Uh, was Dale, Dale, Dale Rayburn? He was I from think so. Here, right? Rank, was Rankwood out here? I think Rankwood yeah. was out here too. Was he? Midwest, I thought. Maybe. I don't know. There's a lot of Midwest guys on there. There's a, yeah. a Midwest roots. Yeah, but looking back at those decks that those guys <laughs> rode in that era of snowboarding, they all those boards were all mountain even though they mostly did freestyle stuff, right? They were mostly, mm -hmm. they're pretty like simple shapes back in the day. Yeah. Was, I think the idea of where you could ride a snowboard was still evolving. So they were kind of just using whatever they could on wherever it was able to be used at. So Yeah. Yeah, but they, I, I'm sure they would have kept classified them as all mountain yeah. at sure. that point, and they surely yeah. rode them all over the mountain. Yes, so it's, it's 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 uh, it's it's possible to do it, and that's you know you get to the technology, and if you think about it, outerwear is a good way to think about it. I always explain to people is like. <laughs> and like, is this going to be, is this outerwear going to be warm enough? You know, and it, this is a modern jacket, right? And it's like, dude, 30 years ago, a guy climbed Everest in a sweatshirt. Like, it, it happened. And he, <laughs> he didn't die. Like, you can, full, so is it, it, like, the new stuff is certainly better, and it's going to be a more comfortable <laughs> yeah. experience. But, like, if you're worried about, oh, can I ride my parkour in the PAL? Like, sh yeah, for sure you can. And, like, is it going to, is it going to be fun? Uh-huh. And is it, is it going to be more fun than riding a berserker in the PAL? Probably not, but like it's still gonna be super fun, and yeah. you, you go out and you get you get used to it, and that's that's a key thing I think. You know, we we get so hung up with all the minutia of the development nowadays, which is that's what we do. You know, yeah. that's what Michael does, especially yeah. is mm -hmm. is a stare at the, the the finer points of it to make these things perfect um, for what we're trying to do. Yeah, well, that's the right. main idea is you design something for its intended purpose so that mm -hmm. it has a specific use so that it's 
almost exceptional for that use that it's meant to be for instead yeah. of just saying oh this can work for everything so i'll design it for everything mm -hmm. you want to find you want to find something that it excels at and design it for that yep. instead of making it kind of the master of none type situation yep yep and that's that's a that's you know that's a key thing for us we we go through this development process and mike will build all these prototypes and it's like you find one that's maybe you find the one that's the best at what you're designing and then uh -huh. you kind of you're always looking for like, well, okay, that's a great powder board. Can we write it switch? Like, does it work this way? Mm -hmm. Like, and of course that's not the intended design, but if yeah. you can, if you can make it better at its unintended designs without hurting the intended design, mm -hmm. that's the master. Good play. You know, that's where yeah. you get it. And that's where, you know, some of these boards, especially I think the Berserker is like the perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. in, uh, in our line and this, you know, it's developed with um, Jake Blaville. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know that really is a board when people ask oh if you got only one snowboard you don't know what you're gonna ride that's that'd the be one. your yeah. that'd be your to, board in my opinion right but <laughs> besides maybe the war pig but i don't know if we're allowed to say war pig because they sell out um, do we have best. one we have one <laughs> left yeah one left and it's that one right there that's oh, wow. the only one that we well, have it's a large i'm gonna take that one with me we don't even have um, <laughs> we don't even have snow yet <laughs> yeah, we no. don't even have snow yet and that that's our there's, last board there's like four of them in our warehouse right now it's so crazy we cannot keep them in stock yeah, but we have, I, I pulled out three boards. I've got a, a Berserker, I've got a Machete GT, and then I have got a, a Manic. Those are three of our kind of best-selling all-mountain category mm -hmm. boards. Um, Michael, can you kind of walk us through briefly like what the intended use for each of these boards is and, and uh, kind of like some certain specs that make these boards special? I know you guys work with, with Jake closely on this one. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's, a, what's the deal behind this, this deck? And I actually, I, this is one of my favorites from the ride line. This is, I mean, this is probably our like most, not generic, but our very, our very most standard. Like, if we were to use all mountain, this is the term for it because it yep. is. It's meant for riding everywhere. It's mm -hmm. the directional deck, that set back by three quarter inch. The side cut set back. The camber set back. The flex is set back. So it's meant to be directional. It's meant to be rid ridden in that way. Mm -hmm. But it's it's so it's not necessarily a park board. But you can take it in the park and do all the things there. Yep. But it excels at just you know. Directional riding, beelining it down the hill, riding everywhere across the entire mountain. Yep. Uh, it's designed with Jake, so we went through probably I don't even remember how many prototypes we went through with him, mm -hmm. building something, building a board in our prototype facility in Seattle, sending it out to him, having him test it, give feedback to me, um, doing testing days in person with him here and there. Mm -hmm. Basically, just coming down and fine tuning things and figuring out what Jake's want, Jake, what Jake wanted out of a board and what features of a board made him a better rider basically yeah. yeah and so a lot of that too comes from like watching him ride older boards and seeing how his riding style had to adapt to those older boards and how his riding style adapts to this board mm -hmm. and just making sure that the making sure that Jake's riding is not hindered by what's under his feet or at least it's helping him is mainly right the most thing. yeah I think that's a pretty common goal for everybody mm -hmm. like ride equipment that's gonna accelerate your skill not kind of diminish yeah. your abilities you want yeah, it to think, excel with you, yeah. You want yeah. your product. You don't want. You want to be. You want your product better than you are, so that the right. product can't be mm -hmm. the excuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Now, uh, moving into the, kind of this next one. This is a manic. Uh, it's kind of like an entry price point all mountain deck that, that we carry, and this is one of our, our, our really our best selling like, kind of like entry price point boards that still performs well yeah. at at any level. Um, what's uh, tell me the story behind this from like a kind of a brand standpoint as well, like. This is so what's uh, cool about the Manic, this is, um, the way we design or we try to design is we'll design the high end yep. and then uh, and slide the, um, the technology and the shapes down sure. the line yep. so that we don't design for a low end snowboard. We design yep. for a high end snowboard and then every year when a new one comes out, it kind of moves down the line. So yep. you get, a, um, you get a, a focused design. I think maybe if you just go and say, oh, we just need a mid-range snowboard, it's really yep. easy to say, oh, here's a radial side cut. We're done with it. You know? Yeah. Um, so with this one, it's got a couple really cool features. The slime wall is the That's main an thing. Upgrade, right? Yeah. So yeah. nobody else is going to give you a, a, a urethane sidewall like that. Um, mm -hmm. At this price point, you got two carbon stringers in it. It's going to give you that snappiness. Yeah. Um, but this is a it's a similar shape to the uh, Berserker. Mm -hmm. You got a um, a little bit of rock on the nose, flat throughout the rest of it. Uh, Berserker does have that camber, mm -hmm. whereas this one's a little flatter. We he can talk about why we 
kind of decided to go flat on that one. And not yeah, why, why is that? Well, so flat generally makes it a little bit easier to just roll over on your edge. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit easier for someone who's starting out, who's just kind of figuring out how to use their board, how to use their edges. And having that flat between your feet makes it so you're not fighting the board to get up on the edge. Mm -hmm. When you have camber, it's generally a little bit trickier, or not trickier, but harder to get up on the edge. Yeah. And if someone knows what they're doing, they can just roll on the edge really easily. Mm -hmm. But if you're still trying to figure out your board and figure out your body position, having that rocker and have that little kind of just, not training wheels so much, but just a little bit of extra help to get yeah. over, it just, it's the better way to do it. And it's, it's the better way to learn because you're, you know, you're not learning the hard way. You're learning on the knees on something that's helping you. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And with this one too, you know, we, it's only rocker on the nose and it goes flat through the rest of the board. So there's still the versatility in it. If you're just on a budget and you, you don't want to go into that, uh, you know, $600 range with the Berserker, mm -hmm. um, with that flat tail and the carbon and the slime walls, there's a lot of features in there. And this, you know, I, if you had the money, you definitely want to buy mm -hmm. the, the, the yep. best you can get if you're yeah. passionate about it. Yep. But this thing you could... You know, if you had to ride it, mm -hmm. you could go out. You could ride this all year. I could ride this all year. Um, I think there's very about it. few boards just in the market with this price point that even have carbon in it in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. this is this is under four, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, two fifty nine. Yeah, which is a which is a great price point. Mm -hmm. And like you're like you're saying is like ride the best equipment that you can at the budget you have. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I strongly agree with that. And that's yeah. basically anything. Your, your car, camera equipment, clothes, shoes, you know, yeah. hell. Anything that's going to make you happy and not create a hate towards snowboarding. <laughs> Keep <laughs> right. coming back the next year. And then uh, kind of lastly, we have a real crowd pleaser. Machete GT. You know, the machete kind of stepped up, amped up. GT, that, that's a perfect name. Mm -hmm. um, what's, a, what's a story and uh, kind of like origins to this board? Because it's been in the line for five, four? Oh, more, probably more than that. More than that. Years. Has it, it been was, more? But it was redesigned about two years ago. Okay. Um, and the way we did the redesign was we, because the GT in the past was meant to be an aggressive version of the standard machete. Mm -hmm. And we were having kind of mixed feedback between like whether that was the right route for that board. So when we came back and did it, we wanted to make it a little bit more of a mid-wide to make it more versatile to Great. match up with a lot more different people mm -hmm. and just be a little bit easier to get up on edge and not boot out and True. be more friendly towards being a kind of a more of an all-mountain twin work fit that works in powder and everywhere else. So there's the mid-wide in there. We kept all the tech of the old machete in there the same, and then we just allowed the, we basically shortened the side cut and made the side cut a little bit deeper so that it was a little bit easier to roll up on edge. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as aggressive. There wasn't as much effective edge that you were kind of fighting against. Yep. But it still had that same edge hold. And then um, and then just bringing in that side cut and deepening it makes it just a lot more just quick and fun and nimble. So it kind of ramped up the fun factor of it a little bit mm -hmm. without taking out too much of the top speed and that high, that super high aggressive feeling. Yeah. So. Yep. And this one, yeah, that kind of the, the main driver on our end looking at this the old gt is what we're talking about um the old gt was really kind of lined up pretty close to what the burnout had become yes so the idea was how do we keep the gt and make it more machete like and the machete is a board that everybody loves it's super easy to ride but it's still um performance based anybody can get on it and have a good time we got team riders riding it mm -hmm. um you got beginners riding it Kind of fit in there so how could we put all the features that we know how to put into a snowboard into that same style and i think that was probably the original design intent for the gt2 mm -hmm. um, but that it by putting all those features in it, it kind of made it a little gnarly like it it took away from what the machete was supposed to be which is like okay. super fun easy to ride yep. so this redesign was to make it the way the machete is but better better features mm -hmm. lots of stuff in there so that's kind of what we're talking about in there and the reason we put this in the all mountain category and not not um not the park category is because we really feel that the like michael was saying with the side cut the aggressive side cut it's really something you can get after and ride everywhere have a good time mm -hmm. throughout the entire mountain and that's probably a better design intent than to say it's for the park we have a lot of guys riding in the park it is mm -hmm. a twin you could ride it in the park if mm -hmm. you know but it's not maybe it's not if you 
it's not maybe as as part oriented as say the burnout or the helix. Yeah. Right, right, and it is a, it is a fun board. It's um, very, it's super fun. Yeah, and, and what I what I like about it, like you're saying, with that side cut like close together, it's pretty quick edge to edge. You mm-hmm. can like make some pretty deep quick turns, yeah. whereas like a classic camber board with a ten meter side cut radius, like you really have to pay attention mm-hmm. all the time because like you can catch catch your edge, yeah. hook up really quick, and it's just like it's hard to get like, your transition zones are you know a little bit slower, but yeah. this is like. Quick. And the hybrid on this one, your your camera basically starts, it goes it's basically between your feet, yep. and then the rocker starts just outside of your insert pack. Mm-hmm. So it's a pretty good amount of rocker out of the tip and tail. Mm-hmm. So it helps you just kind of helps you float through a lot more, but then it just kind of helps you whip around those turns way easier. Yeah. And it kind of helps fight the the mid wide of it a little bit too. So. Sure. So it doesn't feel like a big clunk of a board, even though it has the width there. For other boards that other boards don't have, so right uh, now, if you, you know, Jim, you said you would probably ride the Berserker uh, in the all mountain category the most. Michael, what would be your like kind of one number one go to everyday all mountain snowboard? If I was the pick, I'd probably pick a GT. Um, yep. I've just been liking the feeling of a twin lately because we've been testing a lot of twins. Mm-hmm. And the GT that I like, the thing that I like doing on a GT is setting it back by like one insert pack a little bit. Oh, really? Okay, and just riding a little bit that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I generally feel like if I mean I don't I don't ride too crazy of a park stance, so if I set back a little bit, it helps me feel like I'm not falling over my front foot as much. Got it. But yeah, I like the GT because you can ride it centered, ride it through the park, and then set it back a little bit, and it's a really great powder day board. Mm-hmm. So cool. Now, lastly, um, what would you guys match up with bindings and boots on your favorite boards? Um, I go between the Capo and uh, El Jefe. Yep. On everything. Um, when I, I used to snowboard and be uh, a lot, I guess, and now I don't. And that, so that, that, El Jefe, that El Jefe is pretty aggressive. And yeah. it's funny, like I get it every year and I'm like, yeah, totally. And then for some reason I'll end up putting on the Capo, which is just a little more forgiving. Yeah. And I'm always like, I always finish the season on the Capo. Yeah. I always think I'm gonna handle yeah. the, the, the super gnarly one and then I end up on the, on the Capo. Yeah. I rode the LTD a bunch last year too. That's what I was LTD? surprisingly. Yeah. And I, I thought it'd be too soft. And I, I was in Japan on a trip, that's all they had. And I ended up riding it and I was like, this thing is sick too. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, pretty much all of them. Awesome. Yeah, I think I've mostly been LTD bindings and fused boots. Like just pretty the much. The fused standard. boots. Yeah, ever since. I think I, I gotta. I gotta send Dan his back. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, make sure to send him back to me at the end of the season. I'm like, no, <laughs> yeah. no, I'm gonna keep him. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've been on any other boots since I started it, right? Sure. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much. Jim, Yeah. Thanks. always a pleasure. Cool. Michael, thank you. cool. Uh, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe to the channel and make sure to check out some more videos that we'll be shooting uh, this week of the 2018 stuff with the whole ride crew. Uh, thanks again for watching. See you guys around.